Hello and a very warm welcome to the sixth episode of The Digital Brew. Today I'm here with Ashley Friedlein from eConsultancy and we're talking about digital transformation. Ashley, thank you for your time today. Um, as my elder brother, you've, we've literally known each other all my life. Um, so I, I obviously know you very well, but perhaps you could give us a quick introduction to yourself. Yep, so I'm the founder of eConsultancy uh, and also president of Centaur Marketing, which is eConsultancy Marketing Week, Creative Review Design Week, and the Profile Group. Okay, brilliant. Um, so digital transformation, I know that we'll talk about what eConsultancy does in that field perhaps a bit later on. Um, you know, thinking about topics for the digital brew, I often sort of find myself doing kind of buzzword bingo, and I think there's, there's a real risk that digital transformation is one of those buzzwords. I mean, how do you personally define uh, digital transformation? Um, I define it quite simply as a, a company's journey towards becoming a digital organization. Yeah. Um, that then, of course, begs the question, well, what do you mean by a digital organization? And in my view, a digital business is one which has two things. Firstly, it focuses on the customer experience, yep. irrespective of channel, actually, so not just digital. And secondly, has a digital culture. And I further then go on to describe what I think a digital culture is. Uh, right. And I think there are seven key attributes, and I probably won't remember them all, but <laughs> Good luck. try customer-centric, yep. uh, data-driven, uh, makers and doers, so it's a sort of test and experiment, yep. build and learn type thing, uh, transparent, so transparency, um, openness, collaboration, uh, a learning culture, and agile. So that's the okay. seven. So that's so, quite an interesting blend, because some of that is... In fact, a lot of it's people and culture, and some of that perhaps is tech, and so sort of technical kind of enabling ways that we that we work. Yeah. Um, and I think, and, and again, maybe we talk about the differences between sort of technical and sort of platform level ways that business is being forced to change, and um, the kind of the makeup of modern business teams. And I think you know, historically, maybe we were just talking about marketing teams, but I think it is now business leadership. Um, I mean, do you think that? Um, I mean. Is it the internet that has driven stuff? I mean, is it the internet that's transformed the way we do business? Is, is it as simple as that? Is that a bit too simplistic? Um, I think it's largely, in terms of what's brought about this excitement or buzz yeah. you know, buzz around bingo. digital yeah. transformation, it's, yes, broadly the internet. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, including in, you know, you'd include in that mobile telephony and things, yep. for example, which may not be IP based, they might be cellular. But um, yeah. so uh, the internet and, and sort of related technologies, data is obviously a big part of that. Um, and big data has been a previous buzzword, obviously. Yeah. Um, so data driven um, businesses and marketing mm -hmm. and the connectivity that um, IP, internet you know, protocol and related yeah. protocols have provided. Yes, I think that's been the the change in both you know society, technology, obviously, mm -hmm. business models. I think the other big thing probably is globalization. So, okay. which is sort of related, I guess, yeah, because obviously the internet fundamentally is is global. Yeah. But um, just connect, you know more connected business generally. Yeah. Global competition um, that is also is bringing about forcing some of this digital transformation. Yeah, thinking. That, um, it's an interesting thing. Well, I think. Certainly, my experiences at Browse Media over the years, you've seen, I mean, reticence is the wrong word, but real sort of borderline fear from some sort of senior management about, you know, really quite seismic changes in the way that business operates. It, I mean, do you think people are forced to do it? Are we are now at a point where people acknowledge there is no option but to embrace it and to become the agile global business that um, digital facilitates? Not necessarily i mean i'm trying if you are a, a doctor or a vet or a nurse mm -hmm. or a cleaner or i mean there's still quite a few jobs and we might get onto you know robots and ai and what they might mm. do to some of those jobs but there are still quite a few areas of the economy where you can see how digital would could play a part yep. in terms of having a website having digital booking and reservation systems or mobile mm. apps to support um, some of those things but where it's not a huge part of that yeah. business. 
But for most businesses, large businesses, um, international ones, but even some niche businesses who are increasingly selling internationally via the internet, then yes, I mean, I think it's, uh, mm. it's both an opportunity yeah. um, and a threat, because if you don't keep up with those things, get, then yes, you do get risk left getting uh, left behind or marginalized or yeah. just sort of withering away to nothing. But I think even the... The, the local doctors, the local plumbers, all the, all those things, and I, and I agree with you. I mean, the, the, the equally is an argument that now people won't use the yellow pages to find them. So, that, so the way that they market themselves, I think that has changed a lot. And you know, it, it's very few organisations now don't have at least a website. Um, and I think, but that for me is you know transformation at the at the most of elemental level. I think the interesting thing is just the way that you do business changing, and that's kind of supply chain management. It's 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 everything. It's recruitment. It's it's yeah. literally touches pretty much everything so for me it's, it's very much a cultural change um technology technology is an, an enabler yeah but the most successful businesses be the ones that embrace it um and 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 sort of grab the bull by the horns and, and kind of go with it one of the biggest challenges and i think it still remains is, is the recruitment of teams and i know that over the years you've done quite a lot yeah. about um, sort of defining the the kind of ultimate model of of, of the team. Um, you know, interesting work, um, but presuming that's ever evolving. I mean, it... yeah, I think there are. I mean, you, you could look across a common way of thinking about business or change is across uh, strategy, people, process, and technology. And if you think of digital digital transformation applied to those. The strategy piece is often around business models, new yeah. markets, possibly pricing, things, new, new operating models and things, which the strategy consultants tend to work mm -hmm. on. The people is, you know, the talent and skills and things, which we'll come back to, but that's an area where we do do a lot. I mean, that's some of that's mm. training, but some of that is culture, yep. uh, mindsets, ways of working and thinking, and yep. agile is clearly part of that. Process. Uh, Agile, very obviously, part of that. So yeah. the actual uh, rhythm of a business, the way that it operates, becoming less uh, linear, perhaps less um, rigid and static, and more mm -hmm. fluid and iterative. And then technology, obviously, is the whole you know the, the underpinning, enabling yeah. technology. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I, th I think within digital transformation, a lot of people, perhaps mistakenly, or often some senior management, more traditional uh, thinkers, maybe see digital as technology yes and, and really exactly only that. that possibly yeah. data you know systems and yeah. it really and, and sometimes and I think, just marketing as well it's the website yes, and yes. marketing of that website yeah. yeah and i think marketing has been at the forefront of digital because it's customer facing um, yeah. it tends to move quite quickly sales maybe customer service so they're mm -hmm. things which touch the customer but it's now touching of course all of the employees yep yeah. um, so the way in which they work how do you track millennial talent? You know, the way mm -hmm. in which they want to work is, is different. The device things they use, the way that they use communicating. Yeah. So that's in, engaging employees is part of it. Um, and then all the back office, you know, finance and HR and logistics and offices and everything is mm. being impacted by, um, by digital. Yeah, I agree. And, the, and it's interesting. The, I mean, there's, there's roles like kind of CIO didn't exist not that long ago and C. EOs, you know, traditionally the route into that role is often the kind of FD role. It's a very much a financial, yeah. which is numbers, and it's still sort of data and it's business performance. But seeing more and more people coming up into the, you know, to the kind of the lead role via marketing, because mm. I think marketing led the way in, in sort of embracing the technology and embracing the, the, the sort of just perhaps different way of thinking. And, and I guess for me, and again, you know, this is particularly true for us in search. It's very data driven, and I think that mm. traditionally maybe not what you sort of normally think of as a marketer doing kind of lovely, fluffy campaigns and great yeah. strap lines, beautiful designs, but actually having kind of ROI metrics behind that or having a kind of real raw data yeah. sitting behind that. And that's something which, you know, we as an agency, we've struggled to recruit that funny sort of yeah. hybrid character who's creative, so, you know, likes yeah. words, likes messaging, likes understanding customers or our, our customers customer yeah um and marrying that up with a kind of geeky stat level sort of nerd really and that and that, yeah. that to me is the kind of successful digital well, market achieves that yeah i think the um you know, that, that there has been a lot of talk in the past about t-shaped skills so t like that capital t where someone has a broad set of skills um so that might be soft skills communication and working in teams and things 
um, and then a deep specialism. So right. they will be, you know, a technologist or a marketer or whatever. There was a phrase, I'm not sure whether I invented it or not, to be honest, I think I probably stole it from someone else, but as a, a pie-shaped um, marketer, so pie is in the Greek letter, I'm mm -hmm. not trying to do it like that, but you know, so you still got that broad Table. base of skills, but you've got the sort of left brain and right brain thing. So yep. that's the a mixture of the data, analytical, technical bit. Yep. And the the other side, I never remember which side of the brain is which, but uh, the more creative, yeah. emotional, the more sort of traditional, I suppose, what people would yeah, think of marketing, exactly yeah. customer sort of insight and empathy and things like that. So that's often the interesting thing in um, digital marketing is that um, it's you, you ideally need both, and then sometimes mm -hmm. the risk is some digital people maybe or technologists are uh, too far. Yep down purely data and dry and miss and the fact that yeah. we are still humans are motivated yeah. by uh, all sorts of things like mm -hmm. you know vanity and we're, we're not rational creatures actually even though we yeah. like to think we are so there's still the room you know the big idea or the or the you know the creativity within marketing mm -hmm. is just as or arguably even more important than ever but it's just that there's also this other you know data logic algorithms programmatic yeah um, bit which is also extremely important yeah no you're absolutely right and, I, and I've had a sort of personal battle I guess against a lot of bid management technology um, you know promising the world um, but I, I've just rarely seen a platform that truly embraces um, the, 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 the the subtle nuances of language that's incredibly hard and I think yeah, yes they'll get there at some point but yeah. changing um, you know whether an ad shows at seven o'clock on Friday because that's historically being low performing yes that's that's worthwhile but not nearly as good as increasing click-through rates by just subtle tweaks and language and as you say it's mm. reaching out that human emotion um, which is not binary and yeah. different people react in different ways and I think the the binary bit of that sort of jigsaw is is, is analyzing the data but you've got to then marry that up yeah. with sort of creativity and, to, and a lot of still quite a lot of um, data driven stuff is retrospectives i.e. Yeah. it is based on past behavior or, mm. or things that have have happened not on what might happen yep so with artificial intelligence things maybe this will change and predictive analytics and things promises to try and address that but still often humans might be better at you know hypothesizing about well what if this or what is that telling yeah. us or we know that the weather's been particularly one way or the com competition has done this or there's been a terrible disaster in the in the, in the news or there's a, a whole load of things which the data will tell you retrospectively, yep. but it's quite hard to um, you know predict it or act on it or understand yeah. that context. Yeah, so, I think most of those so. predictions for the future are based entirely on the past. So if, yeah. if like weather forecasting, if they know that if various clouds are forming, the likelihood is it's going to rain in four yeah. hours' time. But if there's a freak event that just hasn't happened before, but the local farmer has an inkling, then yeah. you, know, you can't kind of, kind of beat that. So e-consultancy as an organization, I mean, what, what, what do you do? Um, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff coming yeah. through e-consultancy about um, digital transformation. What is, what, you know, give me, give me the pitch. What, you know, what can e-consultancy <laughs> Well, we offer? do, I mean, a part of it's just thought leadership, I suppose, as in, so we write about, speak about, think yeah. about it um, as we are now. Um, because you know people want to understand yeah. it, grapple with it, and things. Um, so that's in the editorial and of sort of event side of what we do. But in in terms of the work we do, it's mostly around. Well, for starters, it's mostly related to marketing or digital marketing, mm -hmm. as you said. That isn't the only part of um, digital transformation. Yep. And mostly it's related to the people and process bit. So okay. we don't do strategy consulting, we don't do technological yeah. implementation. We are about giving people the skills and capabilities yeah. to sort of do digital better, to digital marketing in particular and e-commerce and all this data-driven stuff. Yeah. So it's... People, you know, so so equipping so, your teams and people with the, the, the you know, abilities and, and knowledge and skills yeah. to actually do this stuff. Okay. So we both talk about it conceptually, but then you know, empower how, how, and enable yeah, okay. people to, to... So you're not really going head to head with the, the Accentures of the world, the kind of McKinsey's. Are they typically more kind of theoretical, strategic stuff? Because yours is um, the, the people element. Yeah, I mean, I think we... So it competes the right word, but on, on the thought leadership -y bit, I'd like to think that we um, you know, are... The regionality of our ideas and our thinking and our data and stuff is just as good as in yep. Accenture or McKinsey and things. 
um, and Forrester and Gartner and people like that. And we've mm. seen them sometimes adopt, I think, some of our thinking and our, our research, certainly. In terms of the actual what they do, the McKinsey's of this world and the Baines of ECGs tend still to focus on the strategy yep. consulting bit, which is not just digital, it, it's, it's business stuff. Yep. They tend to work for the CEO still, maybe yep. the CFO. Um, the Accentures of this world, you know, and IBMs and things are I mean, broader management consultancies. They're actually competing more directly with those strategy consultancies mm-hmm. now. They're also competing with the digital agencies to yep. design and build and creative yep. and media even in some cases. Mm-hmm. Um, so we often work with either of those people, to be honest. Okay. And I don't think we don't compete with them. The bit we tend to do, they might be doing some big, you yeah. know, three, five year change management program for ten hundred million. And that has actually happened. Yes, yeah, so and at the people level, um, when it comes, yeah. so you got your strategy, and you go, yes, we want to do this digital transformation yeah. stuff. But actually executing on that, that yes, there's maybe a whole lot of systems tech bit, which someone like an extension might do, integrating your. You know, front end systems with your call center, with your CRM and your mm-hmm. SAP finance, you know, stuff. Yep. All the wiring and plumbing and stuff. So, but we we typically um, the education capability development bit around the people, and that includes things like, for example, um, organizational design. So, okay. what should your marketing function look like? What skills do you need? How might you structure it? What are the job titles? Let's write the the actual job, you know, job descriptions. Yep. Let's talk to HR people about how you recruit those people. How do you keep those people? How do you pay those people? Yeah. And then there's the actual skills. So we have you know a, a products or services where we can audit your um, digital capability okay. at an individual and an organization level. We can benchmark that against your peers or, or the market generally. You can design a program then to try and upskill those people over time, re-measure, yeah. see what's changed. So that, how, yeah, that's another know. question. How, does, you know, how, how do you measure the impact of what you do? Presumably that benchmarking gives you a very easy way of actually you know, sort of measuring the success of that Yeah, I mean, it, it tends to get measured either just on a essentially a, sort of a knowledge level, um, which is you know, testing what people know mm-hmm. at its simplest level. Also, in terms of the employees feeding back uh, which is more qualitative insight into how they feel about their levels of knowledge, yep. how they feel about you know how much they they can perform their role well mm-hmm. before and after. Um, there are also things around employee uh, getting talent and keeping talent. Yep. So some of this is about nurturing no, exactly and keeping nurturing, talent. Yeah. As you said at the beginning, talent's a really tough tough thing. And then obviously, ideally, correlating a um, you know increased digital capability with increased performance so yeah. better business results yeah now that might be you know we've had customers you know, even as simple as someone coming on a you know paid search training course and going away and save themselves a million pounds a year because they yeah. were bidding they were you know doing they, they were just wrong. doing it wrong yeah. basically yeah. or email marketing that they were you know not cleansing the data properly or they were getting blacklisted by mm. certain um, um, yeah, ISPs that they didn't even realize. Yep. You know, so there's a lot of practical stuff like that where you get very di- direct value and then often speaking to the individuals themselves and mm. the HR people, um, uh, we, we get feedback from that. I'm sure. You know, I think to be successful, any you know, true digital transformation program, and it, it is a program and it's always going on, I think the key there is, um, yes, you can train individuals in specific, in specific roles, so you can get that example where the kind of PPC guy realizes he's doing it wrong and fixes it. The real problem there is um, relying on individuals. And I think the mm-hmm. successful transformation is when senior management get it. They, they have a very clear understanding of what's needed as a business. And then you know, you're creating roles sort of for individuals rather than sort of creating roles for that individual. And it's... Um, it's it's difficult, and it's mm. you know I think um, I think traditionally the the kind of board level um, I say they don't get it as much as perhaps the kind of millennials are coming up and they they're so used to digital it's it's the yeah. way they do it and it's it's kind of easy and they they say it's so straightforward and they're not yeah. scared of learning new technology they love new technology and yeah. they don't like the status quo um, but that that's hard and you know in the in the old sort of CEO who's come up through the FD route. You know, yeah. it, it's it's a big ask, and you can see why it's yeah, it's sort of threatening. And I can yeah. see that's why that the kind of service you can offer to help organisations through that journey. Because there's a lot of ways of getting it wrong. Yeah. Um, so if you can help kind of steer them to the to the right place, that you know, it has to be a good thing. No, I think the definitely the the most successful 
transformations and in businesses, really, I think it has to come from the CEO ultimately. Yeah. And, um, it's and, classic then, leadership. and then the senior manager. Yeah. It's, it's, yes, it's not really a digital problem per se. It's a yeah. change problem and it's a cultural business change. cultural yeah. problem. Um, and and there are some CEOs or senior teams where they they are smart enough to say, look, I'm too old, I'm past it, I'm never going to get it, but I understand it's important, so I'm going to empower the business in the right yep. way, I'm going to champion it, and all leave that kind it of in a good place. I think um, the worst case is when people pretend they know what they're talking about and stifle things and yep. point a chief digital officer who leaves after six months in frustration and never yeah. they don't really want to change, they don't really yeah. feel comfortable with it, and that's. You know, sort of box ticking that kind of hygiene. And, yeah, okay. <laughs> so what's the next big thing? What's 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 the future? What 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 should organizations be preparing themselves for? Well, I think there's I mean, of the various buzzy buzzwords, you know, uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, I'm not actually that excited about. I mean, outside of mm-hmm. gaming and, and various specific applications, personally, 3D printing hasn't again uh, specific yeah. use cases. Robotics will be big, I think. Uh, driverless cars and vehicles, generally, I think, will be big. Yep. But the, the, the single, but artificial intelligence is the one, which again is a very broad term. Yes. Is I think the the technology which will I can't remember that that Bill Gates quote, but we will overestimate its impact in the short term and underestimate it in the long term. Mm. I mean, in five, ten years, when you look at what is possible even now. It's exciting and terrifying I know. what AI will be, can already do actually. I mean, yep. I was saying, you know, uh, the Google's DeepMind technology, seeing a, a thing on YouTube recently where they'd taught or a little sort of a robot thing, or it was just a model really, a two legged mm. one and a four legged one, had taught itself to walk mm. and climb over things. Um, and all it had been told was, you know, you've got to get from here get to here, to be. go and figure it out. Yeah, scary. Now, you know, you think of, you know, babies and you know, humans how long it takes to learn to, yeah. to walk this thing has self-taught itself I don't know how long it took to do mm. but you know the implications of that are again uh, say on the one hand really exciting in terms of what that makes possible also a little bit terrifying yeah just terrifying I had an interesting chat with um, Parry from Frazee last week the last digital brew and he I mean he's interesting from, for, from an AI company he was almost sort of poo-pooing the the, you know, sort of Terminator style kind of end of the world. But as you say, some of this stuff is starting to happen and it, and it is slightly alarming. And I, I, I guess I fear for people's jobs. I mean, some of the more interesting applications of AI are, are doing the kind of routine churn stuff that yeah. they can do very quickly and very, very quick, you know, well. Um, and that's yeah, scary. I, I think I'm not so worried about the whole Terminator. Um, I mean, I can see how AI could be used in military applications, clearly, I'm sure it already is, but um, it's less the, the, the Terminator thing, but it is the social impact. I mean, that yeah. there, I already have some concerns about, you know, like social media, I think, can be unhealthy when you look yeah, at what's with children. Yeah. We're still very early days, but there's a lot of unhealthy things, our addiction yeah. to technology, arguably, which we're still kind of oh, working totally through. Great, yeah. But um, an AI, similarly, it feels to me like it will favor the elite and and cut out a whole load of sort of mid and junior job roles and functions and things. It's, it's, you know, and so we'll end up with the rich getting richer, yeah. uh, the poor not really having, you know, maybe being subsidized by some tax on the rich and everyone in between a bit. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard to learn and a skill or a craft and grow up through a profession if that's just been automated. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, we've, you know, we've had some... I think back over the years of you know running browse media, I've had some clients I feel relatively uncomfortable with because their their kind of proposition for the, you know their product basically makes people redundant. You know, it's sort of automating functions that humans have traditionally done. And yes, it does work, and it does. Yeah. It's more accurate. It saves a fortune. You haven't got payroll yeah. headaches. That you know, but it doesn't doesn't no. <laughs> doesn't end well for humanity. The strange thing is, I was saying to someone recently, and, and that's the if it's a bit like that David Walliams sketch, you know, the computer says no, mm. but where if I'm trying to get something, you know, on a customer service call, well, for starters, I'd rather interact with a, a screen and therefore a computer because I think that if it says, if the computer says something has happened, I believe it. Yeah. If a human says, I have made a note on your record, sir, I think, well, have you? 
I don't mm. know if you have or not, frankly. Um, well, and I bet if I phone track. back in a week, they'll yeah. say, well, there's no record of this conversation. So, yeah. so I'd, and I actually sometimes think, talking to a human, I say, could you elevate this to a machine, please? Mm. I don't want to talk to a human because <laughs> wow. I don't trust you, basically. Yeah. Whereas, at least if I, whether it's a chatbot, I mean, that's another, you know, it's yeah. a sort of sexy area at the moment. And the conversational interfaces, I think, are really interesting. And, and voice is becoming, mm-hmm. I think, 20% of all Google searches now are voice or something I read recently. And much they more in Asia. That surprised me, yeah. But um, so. And, you know, we, we look at Siri, um, Alexa's Echo is yeah. very popular. So um, I, I think actually there will come a time where people will be feel more trust more comfortable speaking to a machine than a human uh, actually mm. even with driverless cars you know you'll pay a know, bigger insurance yeah. premium to be allowed to drive your car as yep. a human because it will become deemed you know maybe it would like smoking you know it's a sort of mm. terrible social thing to go what you're yeah, going to drive taboo. your children to yeah, school exactly. dangerous that's not very yeah. responsible is it probably on, and i think yeah. that's perfectly you know, yeah. you know five ten fifteen years that's perfectly likely big changes big changes afoot yeah. Well, Ash, thanks a lot for your time. That was great. Until. Fascinating. And um, yeah, anyone wanting help on their digital transformation voyage, yes. e-consultancy is the place to go. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, as always, we're always on the lookout for people who want to get involved. So if you've got any product or service you'd like to talk about, um, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you.